Good evening to all. On behalf of SRAC and SRAC Alumni Association, I welcome heads of the various departments, faculty members, and alumni friends for the 19th webinar talk series, Insight on GST to Budding Entrepreneurs. I welcome Indumadi, alumna 2012 Master of Business Administration, who is proprietrix of C. Indumadi Chartered Accountant. She is also faculty in ICA Institute, Kaimathur, handling the course Principles and Practice for Accounting for CA Foundation. She completed her uh, BCom from SNR Sons College in the year 2008. She completed MBA from Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College in the year 2010. She completed CA from ICA in the year 2016. Her achievements include she cleared CA final in first attempt with exemption in five subjects. She secured Kaimathur second rank in CA final examination. She cleared NET with JRF scholarship and completed GST certification course conducted by ICA. In addition to that, she also delivered guest lectures in various colleges like PhD College of Arts and Science, PhD or Krishna Mall, and delivered general public and business uh, people in various public meetings on topics like direct and indirect taxation, and also spoke on challenges in direct taxation in the budget in 26th anniversary celebration of uh, Madurai District Consumer Products Talkist Association event. I welcome you once again for the session, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A happy evening to all present here. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Rajesh sir for inviting me to this uh, uh, platform because this is the platform where I uh, delivered my first presentation as a student of uh, MBA. Here, we have learned how to select a topic, how to gather information related to the topic, how to present it to the audience in an interesting manner and uh, in a way which is acceptable by the audience. So my first experience uh, presenting a topic started here as a student of MBA and now I'm really proud that here as uh, I'm delivering a talk to the uh, to my uh, juniors of uh, MBA, MBA here. Uh, so from a student of MBA, I started as a lecturer in Avanash Linga then as associate professor in GID Academy. And then I cleared my MBA and I started my uh, PhD, but uh, due to my uh, marriage, my kids, I was not able to continue that. Then after my kids, I uh, started uh, studying. Again, I became a student of uh, ICA and I started uh, studying my chartered accountancy course. And then I finished my chartered accountancy course. I started uh, my uh, practice as a partner in Manofa Chotri Associates. And then I started my own uh, firm. And now I'm a proprietor of uh, my own uh, firm, Indumati Chartered Accountant. This is how uh, my uh, journey from a student of uh, MBA in uh, Ramakrishna Engineering College to uh, proprietor of C. Indumati Chartered Accountants went through. It was not an easy journey. Uh, it was tough, so many hard times, and everywhere my learning in SR, uh, helped, SREC helped me in great ways. Now, coming to entrepreneurs, when our grandparents started doing business, it was easy for them. When, when they specialized and when they were mastering the core business activities, they were able to run the business. Now, but when our fathers started their business, it was not as easy for them to do the business as our grandfathers did. They have to choose the investment, uh, like the financing avenues. They had various options for the financing avenues and they have to choose the right financing avenue. And it is not that they just manufacture the product. They have, it is not selling. The concept of selling became marketing in their time. So they have to choose the right promotional activities 
they have to choose the right advertisement activities and when it comes to people when our grandfathers did business only the family members were involved in the business but when our father started business it was not like that due to globalized market they have to depend on various other persons for undertaking the business so the concept of human resource selecting the right person for the right uh, job came into play so financing marketing and human resource uh, knowledge had to be with a businessman to conduct business apart from his core business activities that is where mba came into play so mba got its peak market and mba gave the entrepreneurs all those knowledges to do business but now when you start a business apart from mba you needed knowledge of the taxation laws to carry out the business say the government is bringing new new taxation laws for carrying out business like more than 10000 you cannot spend for a business in cash more than 2 lakhs you cannot receive for a business in cash and every day they keep on introducing new rules for carrying out business so master you have to understand the taxation laws for carrying out your business that is where chartered accountants come into play where they help you to understand the laws and do the business now in a recent meeting ratan tata has said i need mbas for carrying out my business and i also need cas to tell me how to do my business so both mbas and cas are like two eyes for the businessman to enable him to run a business so without mbas and cas a businessman cannot now run his business and with the introduction of gst there are so many challenges which business people are uh, business people are facing because gst is a new regime and changes are coming into every now and then inside the, the gst regime and it is very dif difficult for a businessman to understand all the recent changes without the help of a auditor now so we will just today's session we will just brief the various concepts of basic concepts of gst for the budding entrepreneurs for you to make it easy to just have an understanding of what is gst and if i'm going to start a new business what are the basic things that I, we have to understand about gst now we'll quickly move into the subject insight of gst on gst to budding entrepreneurs gst what is gst gst is goods and services tax so it is a tax which affects both goods supplied and services rendered as gst or direct tax or indirect tax for this we have to understand what is direct tax and indirect tax when you are running a business and you are earning some income on that income if you are paying tax it is called direct tax indirect tax is something which you will not pay you will get it from from somebody and you will pay it for example you make a sale you you collect gst here you will not pay the tax you will collect it from the customer and you will pay it so it is called indirect tax you are not directly paying the tax you are collecting it from somebody and paying the tax since it is not an introduction session this is beats the movie here they are getting ticket if you see the face of the girl she is smiling if you see the face of her boyfriend he is a little annoyed because girlfriend she is not going to pay for the ticket she is not going to pay for the ticket here so for the girlfriend it is indirect tax and for him it is direct tax here the person laughing is going to be the seller the seller is not going to pay the tax the person who is going to collect the money here the uh, the seller of the ticket is the government he is going to get the money 
she is going to get the money from her boyfriend and pay so here the boyfriend you can con compare to that of a customer the girlfriend you can compare to the business person who is going to collect it from the customer and pay it to the government the ticket seller you can take it as a government who is always benefited going to get the money from the businessman yes why gst came earlier you had sales tax vat and all those stuffs why gst came the first reason was one nation one tax that is a unified system of taxation for all the states of the country earlier we had vat for tamil nadu we have tamil nadu vat for maharashtra we had maharashtra vat for kerala we had a different a taxation system but what happens when one when goods are sold from one state to another state it becomes very difficult and we had entertainment tax for the entertainment industry we had sales tax and we had various taxations for different for various types of supplies made for service we had service tax we had a Uh, entertainment tax separately we had sales tax separately so it was very difficult for a running a business if you are going to sell in the same state we have to uh, understand a, a type of uh, taxation system we, if you are going to sell it to another state we have to understand another taxation system if you are going to make a service you have to understand another taxation system so it was difficult now whether it is sales whether it is service whether it is entertainment industry or a marketing industry all will fall under only gst whether you are going to sell within the state outside the state outside the country then also it is only for gst so it becomes a unified system of taxation more transparency since it is system driven earlier where all was manual only you have to fill the form in hand you have to go to the office you have to submit it you will not have a transparency you will not know what is done in the uh, side of the department now since everything is online you will know what is being done when you claim a refund you can make an application online and you will know how the refund is being processed with which officer the refund is uh, is pending and it is more transparent and it is easy for the businessman free flow of input tax credit for the time being we'll ignore it we will see it in the subsequent slide when you learn more some more concepts and what are the types of taxes here is central gst state gst and integrated gst what are these three uh, types of gsts when you're going to do a supply when you are going to do a supply within the state the tax which you are going to pay will be divided into two equally into two one is central gst another is state gst that is half will go to the central government and half will go to the state government on the other hand if you are going to supply a service or a goods outside the state where you are residing outside the state suppose from tamil nadu to kerala or tamil nadu from tamil nadu you are going to export when the goods move outside the state we will pay only one tax that is called igst and the entire amount will go to the central government so if you are selling within the state half will go to the central government and half will go to the state government that is only central gst and state gst if you are going to sell outside the state that is interstate supplies you are going to make the entire tax will go to the central government in the form of igst yes so there are three forms of gst one is central gst the other one is going to be the state gst and the other one will be integrated gst so central and state gst is for intra state supplies and igst is for inter state supplies when you are going to supply a good or do a service for a person who is outside your state it is called igst yes 
the next one pen gst will be applicable for what gst will be applicable gst will be applicable for all forms of supply here they have mentioned the term very clearly it is not sale it is not service whatever you supply for consideration you get money and you're doing something to a person then it will be supply anything done by you for a consideration and in the course of business will be a supply so it is a very wide term and it will include all the services you are going to render to your customers earlier in sales tax when you supply your goods only that will have a tax now we are going to additionally in, uh, give them some services like installation services or you are going to uh, give them some transportation services all the things will be included inside the purview of gst yes so they have made the term very wide as supply for consideration anything any goods you do give or any service you render for the consideration in the course of the business gst will get attracted next when gst this is a very big myth in the in the minds of all beginning entrepreneurs anybody who's going to start a business the first thing what they will do is i have to apply for my gst number but law doesn't ask you to apply for a gst number at the beginning of your business itself many business people in our day to day life we come across they're going to start a business first they will come to an auditor and they will ask us to apply a gst number but that is not the real case only when when you're going to deal with goods only if your turnover or your sales crosses 40 lakhs only then the government mandates you to take a gst number and if you're going to supply only services you are not going for goods then if your turnover or your sales crosses 20 lakhs only then the government mandates you to take a gst number but anybody who is going to start a gst number the first thing what they do is they come to an auditor or an accountant and they ask us to take a gst number but law does not require you to take a gst number at the initial stage or if you are dealing with goods or if your sales term crosses 40 lakhs in a year or if you are dealing with supply of services your turnover in a year crosses 20 lakhs only then it is mandatory to take a gst number yes but when you are going to supply a good outside the state then even for a single transaction law requires you to take a gst number so when you are going to deal in interstate goods or export goods it is mandatory to take a gst number at the start of your business itself in other cases it is not necessary for any entrepreneur to get a gst number at the initial stage itself because it burdens you with many accounting responsibilities and it will not make you concentrate on your core business activities so unless or otherwise your turnover crosses the limit of 20 lakhs and 40 lakhs if you're going to start a business please don't take a gst number this is a very essential thing which every business entrepreneur has to understand your suppliers and customers may force you to take a gst number but it is not necessary then what is outside the scope of gst i said you gst will co cover any supply you make any service you render in the course of business but few are exempted one is land when you buy and sell a land you are not going to pay gst but on the other hand when you're going to build a building on the land and you're going to sell it definitely gst will become applicable petroleum products petroleum sales is fully in the hands of the government and so gst definitely will not be applicable for petroleum products alcohol of human for human consumption that is also the major share like petroleum products gst will not be applicable 
electricity gst will not be applicable for service by an employee to the employer that is when you pay a salary when you receive a salary gst will not be applicable and for the funeral services it will not be applicable import of goods gst will not be applicable but import of services definitely gst will become applicable so land petroleum products alcohol for human consumption electricity salary funeral and burial and along with this interest even for interest gst is not applicable apart from this very short list whatever you are selling whatever services you are rendering gst will be applicable if you take a gst re registration or your turnover crosses 20 or 40 lakhs appropriately now with regard to the rates of gst first is 0% 0% is the nil rated nil rated uh, supplies like basics very basics milk all those stuffs very basic stuffs they have given 0% gst the next one is low rated gst that is 5% 5% will be applicable for the basic things for the basic things like rice your cereals your pulses all those things will fall under 5% 12% is the standard rates 12% will be the standard rates where it will be applicable for computers all the normal goods 18% maximum will be for the all the services and 28% will be the higher rates which is applicable for these luxury items like car mobile phones all those stuffs will be 18% so 0 5 12 18 and 25% are the rates that are prescribed for gst apart from that the very luxury goods the higher higher form of luxury goods will attract an additional stress also which may, may which may be up to 60% of your value so if it is 5% when you are going to sell within the state it will be 2.5% cgst and 2.5% sgst if you are going to sell outside the state it will be 5% igst to recall the terms of the gst cgst sgst and igst it can, it will be the same for any percentage if it is 28 it will be 14 cgst and 14 sgst if it is within the state if it is outside the uh, state it will be 28% igst yes and to see with an example how how the core concept of gst works how you will collect gst and how you will pay gst yes when you purchase a product for 100 rupees within the state we will take the example only within the state so if it is 5% gst 2.5% will be CGST and 2.5 percent will be SGST. So totally you will give 105 rupees for the product. 100 rupees is the cost of the product. You will pay 2.5 rupees CGST and 2.5 rupees SGST, and you will pay totally 105. Say you are going to keep 50 rupees profit on that product, and you are going to sell the product. So you are going to sell the product at 150 rupees. what you will do 2.5% on 150 rupees so it will be so it will be 3.75 rupees cgst and 3.75 rupees sgst so totally you will get 1 lakh uh, totally you are going to get 157.5 rupees from your customer yes so now what you will pay to the government what you will pay to the government you will pay 2.5 rupees how 2.5 rupees you have collected you have paid 5 rupees at the time of purchasing the product yes 100 rupees is the product but you have paid 105 rupees so you are paying 5 rupees tax at the time of purchasing the product yes on the other hand 
you are receiving 7.5 rupees tax at from the customer at the time of selling the product so this 7.5 rupees minus 5 rupees whatever you have paid already you will pay 2.5 rupees to the government out of the 7.5 7.5 rupees you have collected as tax from the customer you will take the 5 rupees which you have already paid at the time of purchase and the balance 2.5 rupees alone you will pay are you are you clear so 5 rupees you have paid at the time of purchase 7.5 rupees you have collected at the time of sale only the difference amount you will pay to the government only the difference amount of 2.5 rupees you will pay to the government this is the system of indirect taxation so your tax which you are paying at the time of purchasing the product is not a cost to you it is not a cost to you it is just you are paying in advance when you are selling the product you will get that 5 rupees when you are selling the product you will get that 5 rupees yes so this this is where uh, this is this concept is called as input tax credit whatever input tax input tax is what tax you are paying at the time of purchasing the product this 5 rupees is called the input tax that you are getting credit when you are selling the product that you are getting a credit when you are selling the product this is called input tax credit i uh, just left a point in the earlier session by gst free flow of input tax credit this concept is explained in this slide as to how you are going to collect gst yes whatever tax you are collect you are paying at the time of purchasing the product is not going to be your cost it is going to be a input credit input tax credit and you will get it at the time of selling the product on the other hand if i am going to purchase a product for my personal use the, at that time it will be a cost for me say i'm going to purchase a, a dress for 100 rupees and i'm paying 5 rupees tax and i'm getting the dress 105 will be the cost of my dress yes but when i'm going to resell the product 100 will be the cost and 5 rupees will be input tax credit and i will get that 5 rupees when i'm going to sell the sari when i'm going to sell the dress clear now what is the registration formality if my turnover has crossed 40 lakhs or i'm going to make a interstate sale what is the procedure for getting my gst number it is fully online and they ask you very basic details like your business details what is the name of your business where is the business in uh, what jurisdiction your business comes proprietor details what is the name of the proprietor what is the part number of the proprietor what is the father's name of the proprietor your mail id your phone number all these ba basic details of your proprietor principal and other places of business what is the address of your business and goods and services dealt with what are the goods you're going to deal with or what are the services you're going to supply what is your bank account detail and what is the state where you're going to get registered for all these things you will require a proof for business name you will require a proof for the proprietor you will require his photo for the principal place of business you require a address proof for the goods dealt with you don't have any proof for the bank details you require either a statement or the front page of your passbook so for all those details you will need a proof you fill in the details you upload the proof within 30 days you will get your gst number maybe there will be a physical uh, verification by the uh, officers from the gst department and within 30 days you will get your gst number and gst is a state-based registration uh, meaning 
for every state you have to get a separate gst number for every state you have to get a separate gst number if you're going to have uh, your business in multiple states you will have multiple gst numbers and for each state you have to get a separate gst number and the next one will be what is the format of the gst number gst is a pan based number uh, like only if you have a pan card you can apply for your gst number and it will be a 15 digit number the first two digits will be the state code for tamil nadu it is 33 for kerala it is 32 and for every state you will have a two digit number so 33 is for tamil nadu so it is the first two digits will be the state code and the next 10 digits will be your pan as i said gst is a pan based number so the first then uh, the next 10 digits will be the pan numbers so two will be the uh, state code and 10 will be the pan number the 13th digit will be the number of businesses there are people who are doing multiple businesses big shots like uh, they do multiple businesses so for each business they will have a different uh, trade name and so they have to apply a different gst number so the 13th digit will be the number of businesses if you are applying for the first business it will be one if you are applying for the second business it will be two if you are applying for the third business it will be three then five six seven eight nine after nine it will become a b c d e f so 27 alphabets plus nine so totally 36 businesses a person can have different gst numbers so if it is a 10th business it will become a so when you see the 13th digit of your the gst number you will know how many businesses this person is doing and the last two digits will be a control digit and it will be allotted by the system as such so that is a random number so when you look into a gst number when you first see the first two digits you will know in which state the gst number is registered then the less than digits will be the pan number the 13th digit will tell you this is the the number of the business so if it is a you can say it is a 10th business if it is 8 8th eight business if it is one the first business and the last two digits you need not worry it is a control digit which is given by the system automatically for some calculation so gst number is it is a state based number for every state you have to get a separate gst number it is a pan based number only based on your pan they will give you the gst number it, it has 15 digits first two digits is a state code next 10 digits is a pan 13th digit is the name of the business number of the business and the last two digits will be the control digit so this is all with the gst registration and gst number gst num registration is fully online all basic details what is your uh, trade name proprietor de uh, details along with the phone number address of the business what are the goods and services you have going to deal with what is your bank account details if if you give all these seven de five details online with proofs for everything you will submit your application there will be a physical verification and then you will get your gst certificate then tax invoice and another important myth among businessmen is if you don't have a GST number, you cannot raise an invoice. It is, there is no such condition like this. When you don't have a, even when you don't have a GST number, definitely you can give a bill to a customer. What is a bill? Bill is just evidence that you have sold a particular product for the particular price on a particular day to a customer. For this, GST number is not necessary. Even if you don't have a GST number, you can issue a bill or an invoice to the customer. You go to a, a Kirana shop, what do the people do? They just 
they just write now what are the products you are going to get what is the amount of the product they give the total even that is a bill do you need a gst number for doing that it is just an evidence of what goods you sold to the customer at what price so for preparing an invoice gst number is not mandatory but when you have a gst number the term invoice becomes the term as tax invoice because in the bill you give the details of tax collected from the customer also so a normal invoice becomes a tax invoice when you get a gst number that is the only difference it is not that you should not prepare an invoice when you not having a gst number yes and invoices can be in any format as the supplier and customer prefers whatever details they need to put in the invoice they can put but here in the tax invoice the government stipulates that all these conditions should be there one you should have a serial number because you should not miss out invoices in between so serial number date name address and gst number of the supplier that is the businessman name address gst number of the customer if it is a b2c sales we will not have a gst number so gst number need not be there rate of tax like whether it is 0% 5% 18% 28% that rate of tax should be given place of supply whether it is within the state or outside the state because if it is within the state we will have cgst and scst if it is outside the state we will have igst particulars of supply what you have sold a good or you have sold a supply or you have made a supply that particulars of supply tax value and supply value has to be mentioned separately what is your taxable value how much tax you have say in our example 150 will be the taxable value 7.53 7.5 will be the tax total invoice value will be 157.5 so all these things can have to be mentioned if you have a gst number the format of your invoice should have all these things if you don't have a gst number whatever you are wishing to like create an evidence you can write all those details and give it even in a slip you can write it and give it to a customer but when you have a gst in a number the invoice becomes a tax invoice and all these things have to be compulsorily displayed in the invoice that is the only difference next eway bill now these new concepts are popping in into gst if you are going to make a supply for more than 50000 and the goods are going to move from the customer from the supplier's place to the customer's place eway bill becomes mandatory eway bill is what whatever bill you have done right that uh, okay eway bill is something electronically online you have to go you have to men mention the bill number you have to mention the details of the supplier details of the customer you have to mention the details of the goods you have to mention the details of the transporter if you are going by your own vehicle your vehicle number if you are going through a logistics the logistics uh, name and the vehicle number all those details has to be filled online and electronically another bill will be generated that is called eway bill that also have to be attached to your original tax invoice to move the goods this is all a little complicated for a businessman to do but all these things came because of the tax evasion done in the course of business the government is with the objective of reducing uh, the movement of black money they have brought all those systems into play because when the value is more than 50000 and if they are not billing the movement of goods when when a, a customs officer or a policeman stops in between this eway bill will reduce the movement of goods without having a bill so more than 50000 value of bill apart from your tax invoice you have to sit online fill the supplier details customer details logistics details details of goods and generate the eway bill and then only go for the movement of goods 
now from this first april one more concept of e invoicing has come invoices which uh, if your turnover is crossing 20 crores then your tax invoices should be only made online in the government portal you have option for uh, preparing your invoice tax invoices b2b supply more than 20 crores it has to be only electronic invoice it cannot be hand bills or bills through your own software only through that you can generate your bills all these are ways where they are wanted to uh, stop uh, not showing the sales to the government yes and coming to the accounting responsibilities in case of gs uh, when you have once you get your gst number every month you have to file returns to the government what is gst and what is for outward compliance you have to give details of the date uh, uh, like invoice number uh, whether you have made the supply to a person who is having gst number or you have made a supply to the person who is not a having a GST number that is B2B or B2C sales. If it is B2B sales, you have to give the GST number of your customer. What is the taxable value? What is the tax? What is the invoice value? All those details you have to give in GSTR1 on a monthly basis. Like uh, April, you have made some 10 sales. Before 10th of May, you have to give all these details. GSTR2, what happens is whatever details you have given will go to the GST numbers of your respective customers. Say for example, if you say I, I have sold to you so much of rupees in your portal on 15th, it will show that you have purchased goods from me. So it gets interlinked. Two is actually interlinking. When I say I have made a supply to you for 1 lakh rupees, on GSTR2, what happens is it will show that you have made a purchase from me for 1 lakh rupees. So you cannot hide that purchase. 3 is the payment. 3 or 3B is going to be the payment. What you will do? I have purchased so much will be in 2. I have sold so much will be in 1. So the difference amount what you have to pay will be given in 3 or 3B. Composite dealers you can just ignore and 9 and 9C will be the annual returns on the year end. In the year end, you will actually reconcile whatever mistakes you have done in uh, 1 and 3B uh, for all the months and you will finally reconcile and you will prepare a summary. That is only 9 and 9C. So when you are going to get a GST number, you will have so much of accounting responsibility Whatever sales you have made in the month, in the next month, by 10th, you have to give GSTR 1. That is complete details of all sales made. On by 15th, you have to check whether all your purchase details have come. Before 20th, you have to generate a summary and make the payment. Annually, you have to reconcile all the 12 months returns that you have filed. So all these responsibilities will come to you when you're going to get a GST number. And next will be the penalties. All these stuffs will have a penalty. If you if you have not made any sales in the month, you it is not that you should not file returns. If you are not making a sale and not uh, filing all these one, three, and all those stuffs every day for for a month, it will be ten rupees. And if you if you made a sale and you have not filed the return, every day it will be 25 per day per return per act. So for CGST it will be 25 and SGST it will be 25. So totally 50 rupees. So if you are not filing returns for 3 months, for 3 months, for every day 150 rupees penalty will get increased. So on the whole there are certain businessmen, they just get the GST number. They will be so involved in their business, they will forget about filing any returns. In 3-4 months, when, when they get a notice, late fees alone, this penalty alone 
they will pay to the extent of 7,000, 8,000 rupees. So when you're going to get a GST number, you have to be very careful every month. Whatever you're going to forget, please don't forget to file your returns. If you're forgetting for three or four months, the penalty alone will come around 5,000, 6,000 rupees. For annual returns, it is 100 rupees. Yes, I, I think I have just briefed about the GST. We have seen what is GST. What are the supplies that doesn't have GST? And you have to get your GST number. What are the things that you require for getting a GST number? What is the format of the GST number? What are the returns that have to be filed when you get a GST number? And finally, what happens if you don't file if you don't file your returns? So these are uh, the basic concepts of GST. If you have any queries in this or additionally, if you have any queries about GST, you can just ask me. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Wonderful session. Uh, like very insightful into the GST aspect. Like, uh, so what I understood from your uh, presentation is that the GST number carries the PAN number. So yes, before applying the GST, definitely PAN number should be available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Uh, like our own alumni association, um, we do have a PAN number, but uh, okay. we haven't got any GST. That. Uh, do you have any guidelines for that, ma'am? Like uh, an association and stuff like that. It's a registered society. It is a registered society. When you're uh, when you're supply when you're like uh, making any supplies and you're going to collect money and if it crosses more than twenty lakhs, only then it it becomes mandatory, sir. Till that, it will not be mandatory. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so you mean that if I sell some product or something like that, but uh, uh, collection of membership fee, I do hope it crosses 20, ma'am. Uh, membership, uh, like for associations under uh, which act you have registered, sir? Uh, it's under, under Societies what? Act or uh, Cooperative Societies Act, sir. Okay, it's registration of societies act only. Okay. Registration of societies act. Any membership fees collected, all uh, it is like for the members only, no sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So it uh, like I will give you an example, sir. Like here, uh, I have registered a flat owners association for the flat uh, flat system. There, the membership fees that they collect, since it is less than five thousand, it is exempted because they, it is. It is on the concept of mutuality, it comes, no, sir. So they said it is exempted. And apart from the membership fees, uh, whatever they collect for the clubhouse, for the other recreational activities, that comes into play. So uh, you, we need to check whether uh, an alumni association getting membership fees from its members is, uh, is exempted. If it is exempted, then it will not be an issue. If it is not exempted, and if it crosses 20 lakh, then it may have the implication of uh, getting a GST number, sir. Maximum associations from members, there is an exemption notification. Specifically for alumni associations, we need to check. And once it is done, then registration will not be required, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Anyhow, like we have checked with the other uh, college alumni association also, they haven't gone for that. So, anyhow, okay. I thought I will clarify it. Thank okay, you. Okay, so because we have a huge exemption list, whatever is exempted, okay. sir. Maybe if you check into the exemption, maximum it will be exempted only, sir. Because okay. the, for associations, whatever like the membership fees they're collecting from the members, it's for many associations, it is exempted. Even for flat owners association, it is an exempted service only. So maybe we can check into the exemption list and we find it in place, then GST number will not be mandated. Yes. So in addition to that, ma'am, like whenever we raise a bill, earlier we had that uh, ST, service tax. Even if I if I do some course, I will be paying a fee like 100 rupee and maybe some 12 rupee or 13, something 12.8, something was there earlier. Uh, now I understand that everything is scrapped and it comes under the name of GST. 
GST. So now everything is with GST only, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, this is Anand. I have a question. So, uh, first of all, like this is a great session and uh, definitely informative. So, uh, Thomas, <laughs> I think like you picked the right person. So, it would be great to have these kind of sessions. So, uh, so the question Thanks. that I have is, um, uh, so, so let's say like I um, kind of like sell some uh, services or goods, right? So you mentioned the 20 lakhs and 40 lakhs, right? Yes, and sir. if I sell yes, it to sir. another state, right? Uh, I have to pay the GST to the central government, right? How yes, does sir, yes. uh, this work out, right? Let's say like I do some services, let's say like IT services, or let's say like I sell some IT product outside of okay. the country, right? Let's say like there is an, uh, let's say like I just do a turnover of like, let's say like 50 lakhs, right? So, so when it, just when the it GST comes that to interstate and export, sir, uh, even yeah. if you're doing a single transaction, you have to get a GST number, sir. The limit of 20 lakhs and 40 lakhs applies only to, uh, like, it applies only to the intrastate supplies. For interstate supply, even for a single uh, transaction, it is mandatory you have to get a GST number. So when you're going to make an export or when you're going to supply to a person who is outside the state of Tamil Nadu, then you can do only after applying for a GST number. For exports or without GST number, you cannot undergo your exports. Though export is an ill-rated supply. Exports, when you uh, have a letter of LC or letter of credit, or, uh, like they have certain regulations, when you fulfill the obligations, you need not pay, uh, you need not uh, like uh, uh, the GST applicable will be zero only, but then GST registration becomes mandatory. Okay, got it. And uh, uh, one more question. So, so let's say like uh, you explained that example, right? Like where uh, like the purchase of goods was for 100 and then like he sells it for yes. 150, yes, right? Yes. So, uh, so I think like one of the reasons why we why they brought in GST is to just avoid the loopholes, right? This 150, right? The one which they sell to let's say a person outside of the state or somewhere, right? Okay. Yes, uh, is this just based on the sales invoice and who determines that value, right? Uh, the reason why I'm checking that is right. Let's say determined like, uh, by a business person, sir. Okay. So uh, so based so on let's say like uh, uh, the lakh. price at which they are selling, the price at which a businessman is selling. It's his own choice. The government cannot interfere in the price which he is selling. Only the tax yeah, collected. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. I got it. But uh, there is a high possibility that, right, okay, he might just, let's say he sells it like 200 rupees or something like that, right? But there is a possibility that he could just build it for 150 rupees. So. Uh, is there some way, right? Okay, is there some regulation around that, right? I know that the, the business determines the price, but is there yes. some regulation around that to identify those uh, uh, kind of illegal activities? I'm, I'm just trying, curious that, to understand. Uh, you no, know, for that we don't have any uh, any re restriction. If if there is an understanding between uh, the supplier and the customer, and they uh, they may sell for two hundred and they just put a uh, one fifty. That cannot be uh, 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 found out with the help of GST. But yes, in direct taxation, you have rules like uh, more than 10,000 you cannot receive in cash and things like that. How uh, it, it obviously becomes uh, black money and it cannot be uh, so easily brought into the account, books of accounts in the current scenario, sir. Got it, got for it. every uh, amount, for every cash that enters your bank account, you will you, you will have a you should have an account, no sir. Maybe it can be taken to personal books as such, uh, but uh, red handedly it will not be caught directly in the case of GST, sir. Got it, got it, ma'am. One last question, so. Uh, do, yes, you, do you have like an auditing uh, uh, frame like where you kind of like offer certain services let's say like somebody needs uh, some help in like kind of like uh, tax filing or setting up a business right 
do you uh, are you kind of like do you have a are you part of a firm or like uh, do you offer those services yes sir yes sir we do of course okay. okay two things uh, it would be great if we could just get your uh, contact or like the if you have a linkedin account or something like that right uh, other one the if possible if you could share this presentation that would be great so yes sir um, yes sir i'll share the presentation along with the presentation i'll just put my mobile number also and i'll share the presentation sir yeah right just it. add my mobile number it's a whatsapp number and you can i'll share along sure. with my mobile number sir sure. thanks thanks indu ah thank you sir so that was anand from 2005 triple uh, from us uh, thank you anand for being here uh, definitely it's a very early morning for you you know thank you for being here thank you uh, i was so what... looking forward for this session because it's on gst so anything related definitely. to <laughs> tax and kind of stuff i'll be definitely there so yeah yeah, yeah. Again, so great, that... great work so uh, these are some sessions outside of uh, the technology and kind of stuff, right? Okay, yeah, this is very definitely. informative, right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You know, uh, thank you, Intimadi, for the very insightful session. And uh, you, we sir. have a few more questions in the chat box. Uh, uh, our friend Danishagar from the Bash 2018 has put up. Uh, Intimadi, can you just go for the chat box questions or uh, should I read for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the input tax credit example, suppose my sales value is lower than the purchase price, that is, I'm selling at a loss. How to process the tax of the same? So for this, uh, uh, when when the tax in sales is higher, we pay the excess amount. When the tax on sale is lower and the tax on purchase is uh, higher we take it as input tax credit in the account in our account in the gst number itself and it can be utilized in the further months to go say for example uh, in the month of april i have a tax on uh, purchase to the extent of 1000 rupees but i have tax on uh, sales only 500 the remaining 500 can be taken as input tax credit in the input tax ledger in my uh, uh, GST registration. In the GST portal, if you go and check uh, the input tax ledger, you will have 500 as credit in your account. And subsequently, in the month of April, May, or June, whenever I have to pay, I can minus this 500 rupees and then pay the balance. In certain industries, you, uh, after a year or so, you can claim a refund. For example, in the textile industry, the a goods they get is for 18 percent and the goods they sell is for five percent so obviously every time the purchase tax will be more so they can apply for refund and get a refund in other industries the concept of apply for refund is not applicable but they can utilize it uh, they can take it for n number of years for 10 years 15 years they can take the input uh, for example when they get a capital goods when they're purchasing a fixed asset, they will have tax on the fixed asset. That will be a huge volume. So they can carry forward to n number of months until it gets utilized. Yes, am I clear, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Yes. And coming to the next question, is it possible to raise an e bill without a GST number when I am below for? Yes, even for uh, persons who do not have GST number, they can create a login in the e-way bill and they can generate an e-way bill. Or through the uh, like customer to whom you are selling, if he has an e-way bill, through his ID also, he can cre create an e-way bill. Any other questions, sir, in the chat box? Um, thank you, Indamari. I have a question, a couple of questions to ask. It's actually very yes, thoughtful and uh, uh, very insightful session uh, we all had from your uh, presentation. Very proud, feeling very proud to say that one of my student is um, doing extensive uh, as well as practical uh, think of uh, you know, demoing the course of this uh, GST on GST. Uh, the first question is, if I use my uh, credit card to pay utility bills, will I end up paying GST twice, which means once for the service, and the second one for the credit card bill. Sir, uh, service 
only for the service you will charge they will it, it will not be duplication effect so one of the main uh, uh, concept of uh, gst is to avoid duplications so for the service charge only they will charge uh, uh, that service portion they will not uh, take the amount of the utgt bill also together so this will be a separate gst tax and that will be a separate gst tax both amounts will not be clubbed Okay. Like okay. For the service charge which you are charging only for that say you are paying some uh, thousand rupees utility bill, like for the thousand that supplier will charge you GST. For paying through credit card, whatever service charge the uh, the credit card operator is paying, only for that he will charge GST. He will not charge for this thousand. He will not charge for the credit card uh, service bill. So you will not have duplications because. Earlier, when we had VAT, what happens is when you purchase a good from, uh, uh, say, Kerala, uh, the tax will be uh, the purchase tax will be based on Kerala VAT. So it gets added up. If I'm paying for hundred rupees, five rupees, hundred and five, it gets added up as uh, cost only for the businessman when he's going to sell it locally within Tamil Nadu. But now, since everything is integrated. Uh, the duplication, the uh, double taxation has been totally eradicated when it has come to GST. That is the main advantage of GST because now if you purchase the goods from Kerala or Tamil Nadu, the 5 rupees will be taken as input tax only. Earlier in that, only if you purchase within Tamil Nadu, you can take it as uh, input tax credit. If you purchase it from Kerala, it will become added as cost. And finally, the end customer has to bear that cost. So duplication, definitely it will not be uh, there. Fine, clear. clear. It's clear in the money. Second uh, question is, can an entrepreneur um, or a person uh, operating two different companies with uh, two different names, okay. but with sa same fan number, uh, can get two GST registrations or how it yes, goes sir, like? Uh, definitely. Uh, sir, as far as your trade name is one, you can add multiple businesses in the same GST number, sir. But when you have a different trade name, definitely you have to go for a different GST number. Say, for example, in, in my name itself, I am doing uh, a sale of uh, uh, two different products, totally different uh, in nature. I can put everything in the same GST number because there are options for adding even 100 items in the GST number. But when I'm going to do one in one name and another in another name, then it is not possible. So when your trade name is same, you can have a single GST number. When you have two different uh, trade names, you have to have two different GST numbers. Thank you, Namadi. Any other questions, audience? So anyhow, I actually wanted to second the question by Rajesh there. That is, uh, uh, he was trying to ask, I believe, uh, I purchased a product for 1 lakh. And that okay. that product is purchased through my credit card, for example. Okay. And okay. now for that product, I will definitely give my GST. Okay, the sir. provider will take the GST. And again, for the 1 lakh which the credit card is giving me, they are also putting the GST. Uh, I think uh, this is what this this is uh, this is a doubt what I have. So I feel twice GST is taken from me for the same value no, of one. Sir, only for the uh, for the service they would have taken GST, sir. Okay, okay. Because so for that the service a... which they are offering, this for services the GST is maximum eighteen percent, sir. So you will feel the value to be more if for products oh. maximum products it will be five percent only. Oh. But for the service, it will be eighteen percent. So you may feel it is double time tax, but it is only for the uh, only for the service they will collect service charge. They will not collect for the products. They have no connection with the product, no sir. So they cannot charge GST uh, for the product. They are just paying on behalf of you. Only uh, for the service charge which they are. Uh, Getting they can collect GST, others they cannot collect, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, uh, one more question has popped up in the chat box, ma'am. In the bill of entry, I'm getting 
IGST tax I am importing from So I said for export you will not have a GST ta tax provided you fulfill the conditions like having letter of credit and things like that. For import definitely you will have tax. When you are importing services definitely you will have tax. Only for export it will not be there. Oh. Okay ma'am okay thank you. Uh, so uh... Rajesh sir, uh, Indmadi ma'am and uh, Matilda ma'am, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, uh, shall we go for the closing remarks? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So audience, I hope you, also, uh, you have no other questions or uh, yes, you have still some questions with you. Okay. So thank you, Indmadi. From the Bash 2008-10 Master of Business Administration, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have made this evening more meaningful and wonderful by a mesmerizing presentation on GST. Uh, thank you so much. SRAZ Alumni Association uh, feels proud to host you for this session, webinar number 98. Thank you so much. Thank you, Department of Management Studies, uh, Professor Rajesh Kumar sir and Dr. Metilda ma'am uh, for opening in Indumadi for this wonderful session. Uh, really, thank you so much. Thank you, audience, student friends. Uh, thank you, alumni from all over the globe who have joined here to make this evening much more exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you, one and all.